السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ویلکم بیک مائی ڈیئر بردرز اینڈ سسٹرز ان ویو زیکا ٹی وی وی ہیڈ اے ریئلی انٹرسٹنگ ڈسکشن ٹو ڈے سو فار از دا فرسٹ پارٹ آف دس پروگرام ارام دا کامنٹس دیٹ بارس جانسن ہیز میڈ اباؤٹ مسلم ویمن ہو ویئر دا نکاف ہیز ڈسکرائب دم ایز بینک رابرز اینڈ پوسٹ باکسز ان اے وے ہیز سی دیٹ دے آر تھرڈ کلاس اینڈ فورتھ کلاس سٹیزن اینڈ دیر اے ڈینجر ٹو سوسائٹی And he talks about the need to have a discussion and a debate. And as Ishtiak, my guest said earlier, by all means, let's have a debate. But let's not demean people. Let's not insult people. And the way he's done it, obviously, has put huge pressure and has actually people put people's lives under threat by making them victims of hate, uh, potential victims of hate crime, uh, because of the way they wear their nikaf in public. So this is a discussion debate we're having with uh, Ishtiak and Fozia, uh, uh, who's a counselor in Bradford. And as I said before, youngest counselor, uh, one of the youngest counselor on, on any local authority, I think, in this country. And she's also won uh, the Young Counselor of the Year Award, uh, which is a national award for young counselors. So I'm really proud that she is here with us today. And Ishtiak, obviously, uh, is a very dear friend of mine. We go back many, many years, a man who has great intellect and for whom I have a deepest of respect and regard. So let's go back to this issue of Boris Johnson. Uh, do you, I mean, you, we were talking about, has he done this mischievously to further his own career? Now we know that this guy is prone to making all sorts of nefarious comments, you know, silly gaffes, gaffes as they say. And I know one of his colleagues has described this comments that he's made. Oh, it's one of those silly gaffes that Boris makes without realizing. So it seems like he does not engage his brain before he speaks. Or is it much more sinister? Is it that he knows exactly what he's saying and he knows why he's saying it? Because some suggestion is that he's saying it to the elements within the Conservative Party because he's now in the position or wants to put himself in position to make a leadership challenge. I mean, Ishtiak is an old hand at politics. So let me ask you that question. Do you think he's done this deliberately And we were talking about this before. And you know, he's using the Muslim community in order to further his own career. Uh, as I said, you know, he's using the Muslim community as a football. Now, is that tactic that he's put together, you know, uh, a sound tactic for him? And how do you think the Muslim community should respond? I know you said that we're waiting for him to make an apology. We're waiting for the, the Conservative Party to take proper action against him, the Parliamentary Party to take action against him. In the event that that does not happen, and it says, you know, the latest information is Boris has said he's not going to make an apology because he doesn't see that whatever he said is, is, is wrong. How do you think that is going to go down with the wider general Muslim community? I think the Muslim, we are looking at uh, how the, uh, the, political, uh, the political structures, and particularly the Conservative Party, mm -hmm. And, 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 and within that, the, the, the Parliamentary uh, Conservative Party uh, is going to deal with Boris Johnson. Uh, because there is no, absolutely there is no doubt right. that his comments, uh, comments are out of context mm. and very insulting and very demeaning. Right. Uh, and the Conservative Party has a, a, a real problem. If he wants to reach out and engage the Muslim community, it has to deal with likes of Boris Johnson, yeah? In terms of whether he was, whether these comments were deliberate on his part, uh, or one of those uh, Boris Johnson's uh, uh, silly out, outbursts, uh, for me that is neither here or there. Mm. The fact that he has made those comments, he's refused to apologize, which means that those comments were intended on his part, mm. yeah? The intention on his part was very clear. I think he is trying to reach out and make friends or consolidate his friendship with the extreme rights within the Conservative Party and also uh, playing on the fears and, and misunderstanding uh, uh, around Muslims and Muslim community and, and fears around Muslim community within the wider British society as well. He did that along with his colleagues during Brexit campaign. Uh, yes. where they actually they had they fought on one single issue and that was immigration, uh, immigration uh, 
uh, new arrivals, uh, East Europeans coming to Britain, mm. taking over Britain, uh, something. It was a racist car, mm. and it is actually is doing exactly the same thing, uh, something. So yes, it was. I think it was intentioned by him. Uh, what he said is wrong, and we are looking at. Uh, mm. the, the political parties and particularly the conservative uh, party to right. see how 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 so in the in the event that the conservative party does not take any action mm -hmm. right and just sweeps this under the carpet uh, like they've done with his comments around brexit on a number of occasions he's criticized the prime minister for the strategy that she's come up with and eventually you know when she came up with her brexit plan that he did not agree with after david davis had left he then resigned but before that, he'd made a number of gaffes um, on, on several issues, and the Prime Minister took no action. I mean, I read in the comments today, in one of the comments in one of the quality papers, that this is coming to haunt Theresa May because she'd never stamped on him before. You know, in the event that the Conservative Party does not do anything, does not discipline him, does not take the whip away from him, and just tries to sweep this under the carpet, how do you think the Muslim community should respond to, to yeah. that. First, that I don't think the Conservative Party has a choice right. not to act. Mm -hmm. But assuming they don't, well, that's we what are I'm well, we are looking at, and I, th right. I, 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 I think that I don't want to give mm -hmm. uh, uh, any excuse for the Conservative to Conservative Party not to take a firm action against mm -hmm. Boris Johnson. I think the Conservative Party must act. The Parliamentary Conservative Party must act. And if that means, and you know, Barrison was is, is I think absolutely right. Mm. Okay, that he needs to be held accountable and disciplined. Okay, and and, and so there are a number of options for the uh, parliamentary party as well as the conservative party too. And we will be watching uh, if they don't act right. uh, something. Then what will happen is it will further alienate. But the Muslim, no, the Muslim community. Let, 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 no, me, let me be more no, specific. Will, let, me be no, more specific. No, no, let, let me answer this right? one. It will alienate yeah. the Muslim community further. So what about the Muslim members of the Conservative Party itself? Yeah, that's a deal. How should they respond no, no. to this? No, that is that is actually how we, uh, well, our expectations. Mm -hmm. I'm expecting, as a member of the community, that our elected members, within both political parties, and particularly within the Conservative Party. Both parties now have growing membership from the Muslim community in mm -hmm. terms of the grassroots level structures that our members, our elected members within the local authorities and local council and within the parliament, they need to actually have a, a, concerted, a concerted consensus to make sure that they actually raise the, raise the, uh, take up these concerns on, on behalf of us within their political structures. Mm. Yeah, and I am looking for our political leadership uh, within within uh, Conservative Party, uh, a Muslim political leadership, right. without alienating themselves and without feeling marginalized, mm. because this is uh, this is not just about Muslim Muslim issue, it's about issue around racism, inequality, how minorities are perceived, how they are treated. It's, it's a much bigger issue, and I'm sure that if they were to provide us the leadership mm -hmm. within the Conservative Party and within the wider society and within also from the other political parties, they will actually get allies and support. Right. But we are looking, I am looking for my Conservative uh, Muslim members of Parliament to show us the leadership and the way forward. Mm -hmm. uh, they, can't, they can't actually hide behind. Uh, I mean, this is a fundamental issue. Yeah. This is an, an abs absolutely open and outright attack on the Muslim faith, yeah. in a way. Mm -hmm. right? And if, my, my personal view, this is, that if th those members of the party who sit back and do nothing, in the event that the party does not take any action, is it sustainable for them to still remain within that Conservative Party? And if, if this had happened in the Labour Party, I'd, ask, I'd be asking the same question, or any other party. That when you have a very senior member of your party who attacks directly Islam and people who, you know, who believe in the faith of Islam, can you still sustain your membership of that particular organization? Elected members are elected to represent their communities. Hmm. Their communities. 
And I think that has to be a, a bottom line. If they are not representing the concerns of their electorate, and in this, in this instance, Muslim electorate, who are, who feel of, offended, and we feel, then they have to ask a question whether it is reasonable for them mm. to remain as members of parliament and remain within the political structure mm. yeah, which is which which is marginalizing isolating and attacking uh, their electorate and their 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 constituency and their their communities Right. And I think that's a legitimate expectation that you have. I, I totally have. agree with you. I yeah. know. And, I, and I've said this before uh, when I used to be a guest on this program, mm. uh, not a presenter. Mm. That, and uh, we've had this discussion uh, some years ago. If the Muslim community really realizes the power it has, there are 100 parliamentary constituencies in this country which can be determined by the Muslim vote. The Muslim community in this country has got the opportunity to actually influence major policy decisions. The only thing that is holding us back is the fact that we are not united. And that is yeah. a fundamental issue. But I think about this very important point, yeah. uh, and uh, something you were alluding to, so I will, I, I, I will come back to it. Mm -hmm. uh, I am not in favor of withdrawing from political structures. No, I'm not suggesting that at all. I think that's important. Definitely important. not suggesting that. I think that. that's important. No, what, what I'm suggesting yeah. is that we can influence yeah. by using, I'm not saying a block vote, but as no, a no. united community, yeah. we can actually in, exert influence on political parties, be part of the organization, and help shape that organization in a way that provides fairness to everyone, precisely. not just the Muslim community. Absolutely, precisely that we, we want to remain within these political structures. Mm -hmm. We know that uh, we know that we have to work extremely, extremely hard to have our voices heard within these political structures. Mm. Yeah? But it is about holding this political structure accountable. It's about using our influence. It's using our influence. Yeah, and occasionally we may yeah. have to use our vote as well. Yeah. Can I ask, I mean, I know this might be putting you in, in an unfair position. You're a young, articulate, educated counsellor. Uh, one of my, my concerns in the past has been, do we have the right level of quality people in the different political parties who are able, who have the nounce, the ability, the experience, and the quality to do some of the things that Ishtiak talks about? At the moment, I don't see that across the board, you know, the, with the few exceptions like you. So do we as a community need to be more smarter in the, the, the quality of the candidate that we, we put up there? I think, um, to be fair, we do, uh, we do have um, very good counsellors and like uh, myself, um, I'm young, I'm a counsellor, I represent um, my constituents, I'm a counsellor for the Labour, Labour Party, but there are issues around where we need to support our candidates, where we need to support our existing counsellors, because for example, this one issue is not the first time we've heard a problem like this that's actually targeted or a comment like this that has actually targeted the Muslim community. And yes, we do have a stronghold of Muslim communities within the Bradford district. And I think regardless to being from any party, um, we are Muslims um, and we should be representing our um, constituents. We should be representing our community. and end of the day politics on a side we need to know who we are ourselves and that mm. includes myself I need to be a strong believer to understand I am this person this is what my belief is and if Islam is the religion I believe I should be actually supporting the people that I'm out there to represent and I think regardless of what religion what background what faith you are what color culture there should be no um, 
racism, discrimination uh, on any ground, absolutely not. But with our councillors, with our existing councillors, with our new candidates across the board, not only in Bradford, in any part of the city district, um, I just think where we could rally together, we should support one another. And where people, in even in different parties, like this comment was made from the Conservative Party, um, I feel as a Labour councillor, I'm absolutely concerned and I want leadership from this. I want um, leadership from my party to actually show because I know they will not tolerate this. Mm. Representing the Labour Party in Bradford, they will absolutely not tolerate someone like Boris Johnson actually dividing our communities, mm. regardless to things like if he's commenting on someone wearing a niqab or a burqa, it shouldn't be accepted from any leadership. And I could, I could guarantee this within the Labour Party, it will not be accepted. And where support is needed on issues like this, regardless to what political party, I could say the Labour Party would most definitely want to help that party to actually come to terms, do apologise. He does owe the Muslim community an apology. Um, and it really frustrates me that this isn't the first time he's done it. He's done it so many times. Mm -hmm. And personally, I just feel it's for his own self-political gain. He is self-centred. He wants a political gain. And he's doing it by using the Muslim community. And yes, we do need to wake up and we do need to see reality. So in, the, in a sense, I mean, obviously, I mean, how do you see young? I mean, have you had a chance to talk to young people I have, today yes, yes. about these comments? How how are they sort of interpreting these comments? Is there a general anger, frustration within the young Muslim community, you know, following these comments that he's made? Is that the feeling that you're getting? There is a lot of anger and there is a lot of frustration. But there, then on the other hand, there are a lot of questions. Mm. Um, I was asked today as well, what are you doing about this? Right. How can somebody get away by doing this? What are you doing? And this was actually from someone young in my ward. And really, I... I wouldn't want anybody to actually. Obviously, be unfair on you because you don't belong to the party. <laughs> you're a, you're a member of a different party. Yeah, yes. and that was very clear. Um, I was very clear about that mm. isn't my party, but then it is an issue. It is a problem within them. It is affecting the Muslim community, mm. and I just feel, regardless to what party I am, um, is not going to be tolerated. It shouldn't be tolerated, and why should it be tolerated? If someone, everybody's free to do and wear what they want to wear. And you cannot discriminate them on their grounds, really. And I just feel um, Boris Johnson absolutely does owe the Muslim community a sincere apology and actually learn from his mistakes. And do you think an apology by Boris to the Muslim community uh, will be helpful? And will, will, it, will it really ease the minds of the Muslim community? Or do you think, much more importantly, the Conservative Party taking some real action against him would be better? My personal view is it is a step closer. It right. could add some ease um, within the community, but there needs to be some real action against him. Mm. And like mm. Baroness Warsi was actually commenting, I actually second what she's saying because I just feel, regardless to anything, an apology, absolutely, yes, I will feel uh, slightly better, but. I'm sorry, the damage is done. He needs to learn from it. It's not the first time he's doing that. But he's so. one of those ca who's characters who never learn. Yeah, she Iqbal, says Iqbal, yes. Yeah, Iqbal, I mean, I think uh, at this moment, uh, Boris Johnson is the uh, uh, center of uh, attention. Uh, I think apology mm. will, will actually help us to take attention away from him as an individual. Mm. The problem is much bigger. It's not about just Boris Johnson. It's about the mindset within the Conservative Party. Right. So the, the, uh, assume the, the sooner he gives the apology, we can move on to actually sitting down with the Conservative Party and other political parties mm. and saying, look, we really need to look at uh, how your structures, how your mindset, how are your thinkings, mm. the kind of culture that you have, uh, or something that really needs to be looked at, or something. But to, yeah, so we go back to saying mm. that political parties. Is, in this, the is this is this an opportunity for us to come up with a definition of Islamophobia, similar to the one that's one on anti-Semitism? I've, I've been told that you know we're running out of time. 
Is this an opportunity for us to come up with a, a, a proper definition? Uh, I think of definition of Islamophobia is. is, is, is because it's that, being rewritten at the moment. I've been yeah, told. But the, yeah, but yeah. To me, the Islamophobia for me is very simple. Right. Okay. If you get beaten up, if you get hit, if you don't get a job, yeah. if you don't get a service. Okay, you are, because you, are you are happen victims. to be Muslim, that yeah. for me is Islam. Islam I don't okay. think we need to spend a lot of time I, I, I on think you're absolutely right. I think yeah. you're absolutely right. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have to close at that note that you've come up with, which is perfect timing. Can I say a real thank you to Fozia? It's been a pleasure thank of having you, you here. Thank Istiak, you very much. It's really nice to have you here again. Brothers and sisters and friends of Ikra TV and Real Talk, I hope you found that really interesting, illuminating. As usual, two really good guests here, and they really opened our minds to it. Thank you very much for watching. May Allah bless you and look after you. Be good. Be good to your neighbors, good to your family. Inshallah, I'll see you next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.